How you doing? It's Amel Amin. I'm here with AmarudonTV.com. It yes, is enough. what it is. <laughs> Alright, cool. First of all, I just want to thank Original for giving me this to go in on. Yeah? I'm going to send out my salutes. Right? Melanin Music. I mean dream, ah, uh, look, I walk with the energy of MJ, speed of MJ, shit from MT, delivery of MK, I'm proud as MX, but this is MA, I don't dance, but watch me Good usher afternoon, with... good afternoon, thank you for having me. No problem. First off, how are you feeling coming back into London? Because you're now based in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, it's good, man. It's, I think London, especially when the sun is shining, London's the greatest city in the world. You know, you can go up West End, if you're boys, I was just with Adam and Femi from um, the kiddo and the adulthood branch yesterday and we just like, it was great man, we just had fun. So I love, I love coming back to London, I love being able to go in and out, in and out, in and out, so it's cool. Uh, you've got a male dream entertainment. A mean dream. A mean dream entertainment. That's like you said, up in what, um, 2009? I mean, no, ASA Drama School, which is where we're at right now, um, it's, it's a drama school I set up in around 2009. Um, I used to teach it with students and stuff like that and then um, um, when, when I had to go and do this one called Red Tails, I got some tutors in and now it's grown and grown and grown. We've got almost 100 students. And um, at Mean Dream Entertainment, um, I'd been writing for a very long time, feature films, and a student of mine um, came up to me and he, and he was like, I've got this short film idea, it's called The Pickup. And I was like, I, he goes, read it please. So yeah, he said I'd read it, didn't read it for like about a month and he kept ringing me, please read it, please read it, please read it. And I kind of just liked his tenacity and the way he was and he's, he's, he's slightly older than me so you know, he's, he's, uh, he's got company and he's been doing all good things. So from that I set up the Mean Dream Entertainment and decided I'm going to do the pickup. Um, made a few changes, I like the show Entourage so I added that kind of celebrity element into the whole mix and, um, and we did it man, we did it. I'm David, star of the new soap Second Chance. Come on, play David! Bounce back. This could screw everything off. It's way faster than the tennis, right? Bounce back. How many minutes you slept with? Who's he? Who's he, Tiger? Bounce back. What am I going to do? Bounce back. from um, ASA Drama School um, because they're, they're really good you know, and uh, they're working on it so I did that and then um, that's how the pickup was, was birthed and that's how Mean Dream Entertainment started and straight off the back of that we just went on to do Special Delivery which is written by Kamara Backers, um, an actress and she came to me with this really beautiful piece about this, this, uh, this post woman who's really kind of despondent with life, lives a mundane lifestyle that, that sometimes we can all relate to and it's really quiet, sensitive piece, very poetic. And she, her route gets changed. So one of her workmates is sick and she gets a text and it sends her on a whole nother journey. And uh, she, she, she starts a, a uh, distant romance with one of the people that she's delivering the post to, which is interesting. And we shot that in a day, you know, and literally she came to me straight after the pickup. I was like, I've got this idea. And I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. And, and there's no speaking in the film. In that there's no speaking, yeah. there's no dialogue at all. It's directed by Jeff Searle, uh, a friend of mine, really good, talented um, director. It's written by Kamar Backus, and she stars in it as well. And um, it was it was great, you know, really kind of great. And the whole team, my producers, Najan Ward, Sheila Norty, all got on board and just did it. Never knew young, never knew young, never prayed in vain. I was in Los Angeles and we'd finished it and they sent me back everything. I was like, cool, this is a decent stage. And then I literally said, do you know, should, you know do you want to do another one? <laughs> and my producer was like, no, no you, know, I'm, you know, we've done. I said, you know, we're going to do another one. And so I sent, I wrote this film called Drink Drugs and KFC when I was 17. 
and it was about it's about a young man who's kind of like who I was at the time when I was like 17, 16 years old, and like that was in love with this girl called Montana. And I only met her once at a rave, so whoever the Montana is, girl, she's you know you lucky to get a whole film written about you. you know what I mean, they didn't even give me a number. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But it's about this one girl I met at one of those raves, like Bagley's and Bigger Fish, you know, big up North London. And, uh, and we, you know, I literally got inspired by the night. And I remember writing it all on my phone at the time while I was, I was meant to be enjoying the rave, but I was just writing. I was like fascinated by these group of boys that I was hanging out with. And they were like, some, one of them was like Max Cocky and every girl was on him. Another one was like uh, Skipper, but Skipper was really skinny at the time. He was just like this guy that used to dance and, you know, so I was really inspired by those, that, that period I was going to under 18 raves from like 16 to like just maybe 18 and um, just kind of collated that. And I've written the feature film, it's been sitting in my desk for like, for like years. Um, you know, I went on to do films and acting and stuff like that more and more. And then I literally said, right, cool, I just revised it, made it more fresh for now. So when I was growing up, it was like, you know, uh, So Solid, uh, Heartless Crew, you know, you know, All I Do, the songs like that. And I just kind of changed it to like the Funky House era, which is what's happening now. Um, and I made it, obviously I, I can't really play 16, 17 anymore. I mean, some people say I could, but I, I decided to say, let me let these youngers do it. And um, we got the cast together, um, a talented cast of young people that I worked with, you know, Kida, uh, William Sterling, who's a fantastic young actor, I worked with him as a silent witness. Jerome Holder, who's kind of like my favorite young actor. He was in Fallout with me and he's in Shank. Fantastic actor. Um, uh, Keith is a movie star. And, and, then we, and then literally I was kind of finding it hard to kind of get to grips with who would play Max, because he's the central, verbose, aggressive, charismatic, cocky character. And I was like, I know someone like that. My brother, Mikhail and me. So he's, he, he's, he's all of these stuff. He's rude, he's funny, he's interesting, you know. Um, you know, he has a lot of people, makes people laugh, he irritates you know, me. Uh, I love him to death though, and I thought to myself, let me, let me get him involved. But he had to audition, I wasn't even here. So my producers auditioned him while I was in the States and he, he jumped on. And after that, the hardest kind of character that asked after that was the Montana character. Because I really wanted to do something different with, um, with Montana. And um, it just kind of mixed up what I always see the leading ladies. So I kind of was really hard because these two very talented actresses and it ended up going to an actress uh, that is at ASA Drama School. Yeah, I fell in love, yeah. I fell in love, falling in love, falling in love. My heart is here, my heart is short. Ninja out you, ninja out you. It was shot on no budget at all. There's no budget. Every, every bit of money came out of uh, either my pocket or, 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 or friends of mine. So for the pickup, we had kind of little investments. Um, it was shot purely on people believing the vision that we put forward for people and jumping on board. So at first, it was, uh, um, it was set in a house club, and Jean Ward, who wrote the film, along with me, the pickup, he runs a, a record label called Lost My Dog. And um, literally from that, they donated all their music to us, so we didn't have to deal with any music and licenses, so they did all that. Jeff Searles, a friend of mine, he's a fantastic DOP, he's a director, and he said, all right, I'll shoot with you, you know, and it was my first time directing something, 
um, and all the supporting artists we got off Twitter and, and all at my drama school, you know. And, you know, sometimes what the hardest thing I found when we went with the DDK, Dream Drugs and KFC, we wanted to get a few, um, I wanted to get a few kind of faces like myself. And uh, I find it's really problematic, not with them necessarily, but sometimes with their representation and agents, because agents got to look out for their clients and stuff like that. So that's, um, that would be the where we find the problems was there's, there's no mo there was no money so getting actors that you may want for like I only wanted to cut two or three actors for on the older cast but it's fine and everything happens for a reason so because I didn't want to be in it at all um, so I wanted a few other people but yeah, now I'm going to be in it uh, I wrote myself a little bigger part for the feature and uh, yeah so it's um, the problems only come from the fact that you're on everybody else's borrowed time because you're not paying them but what I, what, I, what I found is that people have been really generous, extremely generous, very humbling to see people give up their absolute time. Of course, they're getting something out of it to a degree. They get a platform to you know, do what they're doing. But people really gave up their time with shooting around the Camden area for until like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. Supporting artists standing in the cold, freezing their ass off. You know, you've got people just like mums of family members cooking and stuff like that in the kitchen over there and you know it was very and I think that's what's so interesting about it is that I'm not trying to decorate it up for anybody do you know what I mean it's literally we've got a camera I, I, I'm, I'm obviously I've got a name in the business I've been doing it for quite a long time so people have a respect for the the results that I produce in my career as an actor and you know just after the BAFTA screen which I had recently people now have a newfound respect for the, the results we produced then because we produced you know even though we've got no money to do anything we just we have our presentations right we treat people correctly and um, and, we're, and I'm very thankful for everybody that, that's lent their time to it because without them honestly it'd just be me with the script and, and one camera and me doing all the characters so yeah I really do appreciate the time and every, everything so yeah and how long did Drinks, Drugs and KFC take to shoot? so I flew it the casting process took two months no, sorry, two weeks. I was thinking about the pickup. The pickup casting process took a year. But um, Jing Jones and KFC, it, it was shot in two days, two nights. It was literally shot in two days. Um, I flew back into, let's say I flew back in on a, on, a, on a Monday. We shot, we rehearsed on Tuesday. I think that's actually how we went. We were, and we filmed Wednesday, Thursday. People could check it out. Whatever, it was December 29th, we started shooting. Of 2010, and then we shot 30th and 31st. What well, that's easy. See what I'm saying? Like people really went out for us, man. So it was major respect, and our producer did a fantastic job. But yeah, we shot two nights in the cold, and um, yeah. But it's all all about casting, you know. Because I thought whatever the film, the film's good, and it's great opportunities for actors, and it's it's a it's a romantic kind of story with all these funny characters, you've got Skipper, there's this jovial kid that loves dancing, you've got Max, this arrogant, proposed character, Nathan, the guy that's in love, you know, uh, Marcus, the, the guy that's got fascination with girls' lips, <laughs> and if they've got dry lips or not, Jim's saying he gets the cream and he creams their lips for them, you know, it's just, it's all crazy, it's all happening, but the, the actors, you know, one thing I said, we sat in that exact room over there, and I said to them, look, you guys, we have to get these characters right, you know, because I'm an actor, I can direct actors, because I know how deep it is, so I was, I, was, I, was, I was emailing a few of them beforehand and I was like, you know, this is the opportunity, don't, you know, kind of don't mess up, and, and also, but also they respect me enough as an actor, because they've seen my career, they all turn up with their, their, their hats on, of, you know, I want to do a good job as an actor, because they know for me, despite, you know, being a little bit of a commodity or people knowing you or whatever, it's about the work, and if your work doesn't live up to it, you know, if you've got no competence in what you're doing, then people don't respect you, so, um, they, I respect them for, for giving me, you know, the, the leeway to kind of direct them and really kind of pull out the performances, and they trusted me. And we got, I think, each and every single one of the, definitely the main five boys, man. Like you can, as soon as you meet them, you know who they are. You know, you got Derek, the aggressive guy, and it's just, I, I love it. I love the film. I was actually very chuffed when it all came together. Um, the hardest part of being an actor for me, and I know for some of my friends, when you're known. And people come up to you and go, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I loved you in this, I loved you in this show or that show. And they go, but what are you doing now? And you're like, well, you know, life is real. 
people's lives are real and sometimes you know there's nothing to do so that that is hard but i don't have that anymore i don't have a free minute i don't have a free minute in, in life right now